Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Joshua, and I want to thank you so much for being here. And I want to thank every single one of you that is aware of my situation. And you have been praying, you have been encouraging, and you have been providing solution options. And I am grateful. But I would be um, remiss if I didn't say I was not thankful for Rife Technologies. <clears throat> and i did my first treatment last night it was eight hours long <laughs> i didn't really sleep because i could feel the frequencies moving through my body and and i'll show you how simple this was so i downloaded the z app and when you open it up this is what you see and all i've done so far just so you know is is basically go in and pick the things I wanted to treat. And when I say <laughs> there's a lot of options, as I you can see me on video here scrolling, it is just so many options. Everything from obesity to every form of cancer, to eye problems, to headaches, to heart issues, to impotence. I mean, it's just, it's it goes on and on and on. And so last night I did an eight hour treatment. And even though I didn't really sleep, um, you know, it was really cool to feel it moving in my body. So I probably won't sleep with it tonight and just do regular treatments. I've got to call into Rife, make sure that I'm using everything right or correctly. Um, I am not giving a review, but I do want to say this. First of all, the customer service at Rife is awesome. Um, the, the heart behind the company is legit. <clears throat> that was cool to see and to learn. Um, I'm so thankful for that. And even though I can't say that, you know, it's gone, these trimmers and ticks, I can say that, you know, I'm, I'm improving. Um, the Rick Simpson oil has helped a ton. Um, that's probably why I'm so tired just because of the mm. CBD and I've been kind of microdosing the Rick Simpson oil because if I take a full dose, I'm worthless and I'm trying my best to be productive while still resting. So because at this point, I've, for those of you who have been watching my videos and have seen me cry and see me tremor and punch myself and everything else like that's not happening as much and this is from the university of minnesota and all of my blood work i mean they did so many tests they did i mean just page after page after page of tests on me but the most exciting thing for me is um and anyone with hiv or that's been diagnosed with hiv can tell you how much it, this means but my cd4 count is excellent and when the numbers 625 that is what someone without hiv has as far as a cd4 count goes Everything was normal. Um, so as embarrassing as this, this this is to say, I mean, I've already told everyone I had HIV, so it's like, like how embarrassing can it really be? But when I found out that I had HIV, I also found out that I had syphilis and um, other things. And, and so there's a syphilis treatment <laughs> the needles are so long and they're so painful and it hurts really bad so i did all my treatments all at like not one time because you can't do syphilis treatment all in one day but i did that and this has been like eight years but one of the things that is cool and why i'm bringing this up is that anytime it's like hiv you can become undetectable, but the antibodies still exist. 
okay, well, the antibodies are not in me, the HIV. The HIV antibodies are not there. The syphilis antibodies are no longer there. And it says it on this paperwork. That is like testing was normal and negative. So antibodies always show up. So when you do a syphilis test, you have to do two. You can't do one, you do two. The first one showed up negative. It's not supposed to do that, but it did. The second test showed up negative. Not supposed to do that. So what I'm getting at is this. God is healing me. And I am not going to believe anything differently. Because why would God work in me the way he has and heal my insides and then leave the outside wacky. I don't believe he's going to do that. I believe God's healing me. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not in my paperwork, but Jessica will tell you that the entire time that infectious disease, the cardiologist, the neurologist, the internal medicine, psychiatry, psychiatry, every one of them that came in, I asked them, is it possible that God's healing me? And when they were like, what do you mean? Well, you see, on all these tests, I'm listed as DID and ASD and PTSD and HIV. Is it possible now that my blood work and my brain scans are normal, that God's healing me, even though this is happening with the tremors? It was amazing how many times I was dismissed until I wasn't. And of course, I'm grateful that I had Jessica and my mom and dad there because that allowed me to loudly advocate for myself. And then I had reassurance that I wasn't crazy because my family was there to verify that I'm a man of faith. I believe that God is the great physician and I believe that I'm going to be healed. So the last time the neurologist came to see me, there was a whole bunch of them, like six or seven. And there's this really, really tall, like supermodel, tall, supermodel, cocaine skinny is the way I call them, you know, basically a coked out runway model. Nice way of saying that. Anyway, she looked like that, but she was very pretty, very tall, very smart, and wore these glasses that just made you know she meant business. And so I made sure that when I was telling them that God was he asking if God was healing me, and, and me saying that God is going to heal me, I made sure to make eye contact with them so they could see me and know that I'm being serious and I'm not crazy. I'm not hallucinating burning bushes or things like that. It just is. God's going to heal me. Is this possible that these spasms are somehow healing me? That is when they finally said, we like your idea of using natural medicine. I showed them the Rife machine. I didn't show them these beautiful coils because I didn't have it yet. But I did show them the information on the Rife machine. And they supported that. And, and instead of giving me nerve medication, anti-anxiety, anti-psychotic, and blah, 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 all the medicine that they were trying to prescribe me, they backed off and said, 
Rick Simpson oil if it's helping you. And use the Rife machine. And we're also going to, what's it called? Um, I'm going to start seeing a neurology movement clinic. So I don't have a diagnosis. Um, they want to send me to a neurology movement clinic with no diagnosis. <laughs> but maybe they're trying to help me learn how to, um, well, you know, with ASD and DID, sensory issues are very prevalent because the sensory issues can be a contributing factor. It can be a contributing factor to switches. And I'm not trying to switch anymore. I'm not trying to have sensory issues where I have to go into safe rooms to avoid certain sounds and noises or to calm down. I want to heal. I want to heal. So I don't have to feel like I need to explain my weird quirks that come with DID and ASD. I want to heal and just be Joshua and not be a label. And I believe that God is going to do that for me. But I want to make this clear. God, I don't believe that God's just going to go, abracadabra, you're healed. I believe that I get to do the work and I'm willing to do the work. I was willing to do the work when I gave my life to the Lord almost eight years ago. I was willing to do the work then to get well spiritually and to get my mind right. And so that commitment doesn't change today. I'm still going to get well and I'm going to be a hundred percent well. And you know what? I owe that to our creator. I owe that to God. And the reason I say that is because he, she, it, they, them, I don't care, whatever you want to call the creator of all, the one that gave us life, the one that gave us spirit, that God, that creator. <clears throat> God will work with the people that work with God. I don't believe we can sit around and name it and claim it and command it's healed. I think we get to do the work. And yes, radical healing takes place. But we get to do the work. And the work is worth it. And the work is where you get perfected. And I don't want to be anything less than what I was created to be. It's key. So when I talk more controlled and slower, it aggravates whatever this is. So I'm really trying to talk normal because it's very uncomfortable to to hear me grunt and bark at people i was barking at doctors basically and you're like that i'm like i'm not barking at you i promise i'm really not growling i'm not mad at you so i had to make sure to smile and i gotta be honest it's getting harder to smile because i am exhausted Okay, so the other thing I want to say is for those who asked about GenoStem, if this was the problem, no way. It's impossible because look at this. Medication list. Continue. Continue taking these medications. Genvoya. By the way, my liver came back perfect. Shocking. So no side effects. 
from the HIV meds that they could see because they did an <clears throat> inflammation test too. No inflammation, but I had inflammation. So right here, Genostim. Organic peptides, fortified zinc, vitamin C. That's the other bottle. I don't have it here. This is pro. This is the one I take. So it had nothing to do with it. If anything, I'm convinced that's how I've been able to get through this because of the stamina and strength that is required to beat myself up for the last 14 days. <clears throat> So, praise God, he's healing me. So, I read a new devotional this morning, and I'm going to read it. I think I showed you all the app. I don't know. I, I did. I showed you the app. So, kudos to Rife. I can't give you, I'm a healed, a healed, I cannot tell you that I am healed yet. But I can tell you that I am on my way. And God is going to heal me in these devices, the RSO in this frequency machine from Rife are going to help. And I'm going to do the therapy to help. I am committed to being 100% healthy and becoming all that I was created to be. And that means I get to be healthy in mind, body, spirit. My mental health, my physical health, my spiritual health gets to be on point. And that's what I'm working towards because I want God to use all of me. So that's why I'm gonna be healed. I believe it with all my heart. Okay devotional time i like this one this one's new <laughs> it's called running a fearless race grace for every hurdle when i was young i feared correction being told no or that i was wrong cut me to the core so being told I was wrong cut me to the core. I wanted people to always be pleased with me. When something came about that could derail that, it ate at me. Looking back, I think a lot of that came from my misunderstanding of God's character. I often feared him. Not because I understood the magnitude of his glory, but because I worried I would never live up to his standard. Yet, that was right. I wouldn't. Not on my own, at least. God's judgment comes from the reality that he is holy. So, what does not honor his holiness goes against his nature. But those standards for how we live ought to live that God has given us through his word are loving provisions to help us live a full life in godliness. Through his son, we have forgiveness. And that right there is God's grace, love, and kindness. While there is nothing wrong with trying to do one's best, living in fear of failure or correction can get in the way of living a life that honors God. What I came to understand is that God's intention is not for our lives to be perfect or for us to succeed in all we set out to do, but to know that win or lose our Heavenly Father's love is unwavering for those who trust in His Son and that He supplies what we need for a godly life. Do you view God's word as rules and restrictions for your life or the ability to experience freedom by his knowledge of his glorious grace? Heavenly Father, thank you for adopting me into your family. Lord, grant me 
peace and grace for the areas of my life in which I fear failure. I know you see my heart's intention and wanting to always put my best efforts forward. Would you grant me growth in my trust and your unwavering love as I walk out your plan for me, win, lose, or draw? In Christ's name I pray, amen. Not great. Oops. In Christ's name I pray, amen. I'm going to read this. So such confidence we have through Christ before God, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. There's other verses, but you know, when this all first happened, I did a bunch of videos talking about my dream and what I believe God created me for. And I had a couple nights where you know, I thought I was dying and was saying goodbye. Um, that's a weird feeling. I've overdosed six times and not had that feeling. I found myself saying, what's the point? Why did I go through the last seven, eight years working to rehabilitate my life and doing what I believed you were leading me to do? Why would you take me this far for me to fail now? I haven't lived up to my potential. I've tried. I haven't accomplished what I set out to. I have not set free the prisoners that is on my heart to set free. I haven't accomplished any of my main goals. But I can look at that and then I can say, well, what if that wasn't God's dream for me, the world's mere experienced humanitarian tour, bringing food and shelter and resources and media literacy and skills to the masses, teaching them how they can use their intellectual property and their gifts to provide for themselves, to express themselves as creators, because I believe that we're all creators, just in different ways. But believe it or not, media is the vehicle for all creators to bring things to life for the masses to see. And I just thought I was done. I mean, Jessica was promising me. Jessica was promising me that I, that she would carry on the world's mayor experience, which is not about me. It's not me at all. It's not about me at all. I know my nickname is the world's mayor, but the world's mayor experience has nothing to do with me at all. And the way it's set up and planned is that it's meant to go on without me because it was never about me. The world's mayor is about inspiring other people to do what a world's mayor would do. And I know what the new world order fear is and world one world government. But a mayor is supposed to elevate people into their natural gifting to where they can operate at the highest capability. And the only way I believe that we can operate at our highest potential and capabilities is when we're using our gifts and talents and intellectual property in alignment 
with the will of our creator. That's what I believe. I can't back that up by anything. I just believe it with all my heart. And, and from what I've experienced in my own life, no one living in their purpose, no one serving their fellow man with the servant's heart has time to be a racist, homophobic douchebag. They just don't have time for it. But I'm still alive and God's going to heal me. So Jessica doesn't have to worry about stepping in just yet. And I'm not giving up on my dream. Even though it may not be what God has for me, I'm not giving up because I haven't had reason to believe I should give up. I'm not going to give up my dream of wanting to host the Oscars. Not because I like movies. Because it's the toughest room in all the world to MC. My dream of making the devil inside me a franchise for other people's devil stories and how they overcome and what God did with their life. I want I, I want to see that happen. I'm gonna write another book. I may start now. I don't know. But I'm gonna get well. But I want to say this. So while I was talking about being a failure or not feeling like I've accomplished what I set out to because I haven't, let me tell you what God's done for me. I've been divorced three times. I lost the right to see my twins. I gave them up for adoption when they were two years old because I was still very heavy into my chemsex addiction. In fact, accelerating it was getting acceleratingly worse. My oldest daughter that I didn't know about till she was three. My grandson. My twins. All these things that I lost. Oh my, I lost my I brain farted for a second. All of these things that I've lost, God is slowly restoring. And so while I was a bad, deadbeat dad, and I was an abusive partner in most of my relationships, and a cheater, and a liar, and everything else, God restored my heart. God restored my life, not because I said, take my life, it's yours. That helped <laughs> surrendering my will for his helped. Yes, but I still had to take the first step and then the second and then the third to getting well, making the next right decision. And I haven't made a lot of great decisions doing something every single day to stretch my faith. And you know what? There's something really special about doing that. If you want to see God work in your life, do something to stretch your faith today. It could be apologizing for something you know you should apologize for, but you're scared. It could be forgiving someone. Who you hate and you're hanging on to resentments it could be anything you could it could be for you that you're living a lie but whatever we surrender to God he will use for good but if we keep our hurt and our sadness and our disappointment and our frustrations and our fear, if we keep it to ourselves and keep it inside, God won't use it. We have to give it to God for him to be able to use it. So whatever is not serving you well today, surrender it. I don't care what you've done in your life. 
if you've read my book, you will read some of the most horrific crimes, abuses, and some of the most disgusting, vile behavior imaginable. Well, not imaginable, because there's some really bad stuff out there, but I did some bad things. But if God can restore my life, he can restore yours. I have a relationship with my oldest daughter now. I have a relationship with my grandson now. That wasn't possible without God. The twins, even though I haven't seen them since they were two, I know I'm going to see them again. My partner, Jessica, and the two daughters that we raised together, that is a testimony to what God can do. Again, if you want to know how far gone I was, just read my book. And if you don't have the money, I'll give it to you for free. But the devil inside me shows exactly what God did for me, but shows also just how far gone I was. I can guess that you aren't that far gone. And if God can rehabilitate my life, tremors be damned. He can do the same for you. God is healing me. Healing me. And I have the proof. Am I using God's technology and God's medicine? Yeah. But it's still God. And he uses us to help others heal. And all of you have been used, at least, you know, not all, I shouldn't say all of you, but a lot of you have been used in this situation with me to help me keep going. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient. Thank you for being a friend. And even to the strangers who stepped up to help, thank you. Thank you for letting God use you because it impacted my life. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your encouragement. And I have no idea if I made any sense right now, but I'm going to go to bed. I'm not going to do anything for a while. And um, I'm going to get well and heal 100%. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for listening. My name is Joshua T. Berglund. You can learn more about my broadcast and other things if you would like at www.joshuatberglund.com. And thank you to Genostem for sponsoring this, this broadcast. You can use the promo code MARE to save 20% on your risk-free order. That means money-back guarantee if it doesn't work for you. My own doctor's telling me to take it because they saw what it's doing for me. So I'm excited to keep using Rife, and I'm excited to be able to celebrate 100% healing with all of you. God bless. Thank you for watching.